In today's video, we're going to be benchmarking the Sapphire Nitro RX 580 with 8GB of GDDR5 memory. How good will it perform at Ethereum mining, Zcash mining and Monero mining, and also a little bit of gaming performance. First of all, let's go over everything this card has. So the price of this card is about $310 on Amazon, and that's actually a really nice and appealing price. And as always, it has a really nice backplate on the card that I really love. It has two HDMI connectors, two DisplayPort connectors, and a single DVI connector as well. So this card does have lighting on the Sapphire logo in different colors if you want to. It has huge heat pipes and it is a very thick heatsink. But also it looks 100% the same as an RX 570, so that's gonna save me some footage. Okay, so let's benchmark this puppy, plug it into our computer and get the results. We set our MSI Afterburner with the highest memory clock this card can handle to be stable. We also put the core voltage to minus 60 to get more efficient results out of it. So today we're only going to be changing the core clocks and you will see that in the benchmarks too. Okay, so let's start off with the Ethereum benchmark and the Ubic benchmark at the same time because they share the same algorithm but Ubic seems to be performing a little bit different than Ethereum. Okay, so when we clocked MSI Afterburner to 1050 MHz for Ethereum mining, we came to a really nice 108 watts with 28.7 MHz per second. As you can see, I will always put the core memory and voltage behind the bar so you know which memory settings I have used, I mean core clock settings and voltage, so you can set the one you really like most on this card. So it was a whopping 3.76 watts per mega hash and that's actually pretty good to be honest. But when we clocked Ethereum to 1150 we came to a really high 130 watts of power usage. And yeah we got a really nice 30.6 mega hashes per second out of it. But we used 4.24 watts per mega hash. So if you have a country with really expensive electricity it's better to clock your Ethereum at 1050 than 1150 because you're using about... 0.5 watts per mega hash extra that you really don't want to pay for. So if we clocked Ubic to the same core and memory settings, we came to a 108 watts as well, but it was doing 29 mega hashes per second on Ethereum mining. So it was really minimal the difference because we only use 3.72 watts per mega hash on this one. But of course, if we clocked Ubic to 1150, we came to the exact same result as Ethereum with 130 watts and doing 30.6 mega hashes per second. Next up was Zcash with the Equihash algorithm, and we're gonna be benchmarking this with even more core settings because this is a core intensive coin, so it will do difference on the higher core clocks. On Zcash we first clocked our car to 1050 megahertz. We came to a really nice 100 watts with 265 solutions per second. That's about 0.38 watts per solution and that's actually pretty great. Next up we had Zcash with a core clock of 1150 megahertz and we were drawing 120 watts. So it was a really high increase in, in wattage on the card and it was doing only 292 solutions per second. So that was a whopping 0.41 watts per solution. And that is actually not so good for the card. But next up we clocked the card to 1250 megahertz and we still are using 120 watts on the card, but we increased the hash rate to 314 solutions per second and that was getting better. So our 0.38 watts per solution came back to the original one where we came from. So we increased our solutions per second without losing more power. So that was really good. But finally, last but not least, we increased it to 1350 and we came to a really nice 125 watts and it was doing about 332 solutions per second. This came to another 0.38 watts per solution so just don't make sure that you're not using the Zcash on 1150 on your card. Because that's gonna be an energy waste. Just clock it to the highest you can. 
Last but not least, we're gonna be benchmarking Monero, and I got some really surprising results out of this one. Okay, so we're gonna be benchmarking Monero today on this card, but most people already know that this is kind of useless because the AMD Vegas took over the Monero cryptocurrency mining because they are just way better at it than any other card in the world, but we're still gonna be benchmarking it. So if we put our core to 1050 on the core, we came to a 94 watts mining at 691 hashes per second. So that's about 0.136 watts per hash. But when we clocked our core clock to 1150, we came to a whopping 110 watts and we were mining at only 711 hashes per second. So we came to a really high 0.155 watts per hash, so it increased like 10% or even 20%. But next on, we clocked our core to 1250 and we were still using 110 watts and our hash rate increased to 727 hashes per second. So our wattage per hash decreased to 0.51. But if we clocked our core to 1315 we were still using 110 watts and doing 736 hashes per second. But that still made our cart use 0.149 watts per hash. So it's still better to mine Monero with the lowest core, like 0.136 watts per hash. That's way better for people that have really expensive electricity. So that's the reason why I'm doing these benchmarks, so people know what settings they need to set for their cards. And maybe you guys know way better core clock settings than I do, and I could give it a shot and put it in the comments if I can find a better one for every single coin. Okay, so there was one more benchmark to go. We are going to use the stock settings of the card and we're gonna run 3D Mark. We're gonna do Time Spy from now on because we started off with Time Spy and we're just gonna base our benchmark on that one. So let's run it and see what the result is of this card. So this card performed pretty well on this benchmark, but it was almost not the best card to use for gaming, because if you want to do 4K gaming with this card with a score of 4574, you just run a little bit short because you will need about 6733 to have a decent 4K gaming PC. But of course if you stick two of these RX 580s into your computer for about $620, you can play 4K gaming really with ease for sure. But hopefully you all enjoyed this video today and see you guys in the next one because that one is going to be the Sapphire RX 570 with 4GB of memory. So see you guys in the next one.